Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Right, we'll switch to Quick Drafts. I need some rares to fill out my collection. Yeah, I could use one more Hideous Laughter for the collection. If we were taking the best card for Drafts, I don't know, maybe Spoils or Wizards class, but just rare drafting here. Uh, nothing exciting. Guess we can take a troll. Don't love green as a color. Not sure how much the bots prioritize the steel and sack synergies. Otherwise we could try and force black red. But there's no great black or red card here. I guess pair of goblins is playable. But not even that great. Eh, I guess we'll try it. Sadly, already crafted my four orbs the other day. Troubadour's good, though. Not seeing any good black or reds. I mean, Singer's fine, Skeleton's playable. The rares have already dried up. So we're looking at... Maybe an improvised weaponry. Dried or... Can be okay, but usually only shines in blue-black where you can make it unblockable with the flying enchantment or with uh, Cridal. Alright, there's some cards. There's a price. I think I'm down. Hope to get the uh, Steal and Sacrifice deck going. Alright, well, the bots don't seem to be respecting the archetype whatsoever. So all three of these cards would be excellent. Another price, dispute, and ghoul. I think we take the price. And then between dispute and ghoul, there's two cards we can hope to get later. But yeah, I mean they're all very useful. All right, there's disputes. Take an evolving wilds. Don't think I'm playing the thieves tools, but you never know. Could maybe end up with a few death touch creatures. Sure. So we want to be on the lookout for Death Touch creatures, more Steel and Sacrifice synergies, and then just, you know, good black and red cards. Maybe Hexblade makes it if we end up with more treasures, and ooh, last big dispute. That's exciting. Alright, so double price, double dispute after pack one. Probably just gonna rare draft here. But if we were taking the best card for the deck, Probably Fireball over Precipitous Drop. Rare Draft it is. Hope to wheel Dispute. And Vampire Spawn or Soul Sword. We have a few ways to make treasures with Dispute. We with the weaponry. It's a little awkward because if you play like a turn 3 weaponry then you're playing off curve if you want to spend treasure mana to cast a cell sword. Could go with pit trap as well. Evolving Wilds is just good because the mana fixing in limited is pretty bad. If you're playing 17 lands and your mana base is 9-8 it might look okay on the surface but if you actually take a look at the numbers, you're pretty unlikely to cast a double colored card on curve with that mana base. So any dual land can help, even in a two color deck. And then of course it does potentially open up the possibility to splash. I think I just need more creatures at this point. There's another weaponry, ogre. 
Oh, never mind. Grim Bounty almost missed it. Nothing I'm excited about. Maybe the Hexblade to combo with our treasures. Not expecting to get a ton of equipment here. Another weaponry. Okay, don't mind the Horde Robber. Zombie Ogre also got a bit better now, but we're not really planning to complete any dungeons. I might actually play the Thief's Tools. Ooh, nice. Sepulchre Ghoul. Don't mind an Ogre. Dispute or another pair of goblins. So I only have the two price of loyalty so far. I have double disputes and Sepulchre Ghoul as sacrifice outlets. Pair of Goblins is also still decent here, as it provides a bit of sacrifice fodder for the deadly dispute and the ghoul potentially. If I really want to leverage the plus two plus so from Pair of Goblins, I'm gonna need some more creatures. Yeah. There's also an argument for the Cell Sword. Alright, another Ogre. Not really a Rapier deck. Eh, maybe Fain Death is playable. Alright, so all things considered, I mean, so far we've rare drafted how many cards? One, two, three impacts that didn't have a whole lot for us and even though our deck doesn't have any you know powerful rares or even uncommons really i think we've got like one uncommon in the deck which is a pair of goblins we still have those powerful synergies at common with the steal and sacrifice mechanics all right nice forsworn paladins great there's some other good cards too the grim wanderer pretty good in this deck burning hands is Fine too, and then there's another price of loyalty, which I think we have to hope to wheel at this point. And with all the black and red in the in the pack, we should be relatively likely to wheel something useful. But yeah, Paladin's pretty great. Ooh, love me a Morning Star. Think I still take it over an extra price, and again hope to wheel it. We've gotten some pretty late prices earlier, so... Wow. Merchants, Grim Bounty, this pack is stacked. This is close. Merchant is like one of the best uncommons for the archetype. Definitely over Red Dragon. But Grim Bounty is pretty difficult to replace too. I mean, to be fair, if we have... If we wield double price, then we'll have Merchant as an extra sacrifice outlet to combo with her for Price of Loyalty, which kind of does the same job as Grim Bounty. So I think Merchant's better. Nothing here. Sellsword or Herald. I guess I could use a Curve Topper Mana Sink. Barbarian's fine. Find some prisoners. Playable too. Alright. So it really comes down to whether or not we wield those two copies of Price of Loyalty. All right, got another ghoul, that's nice. All right, there's one. And there's two, perfect. Mm, do I want an iron golem? I do want a little bit of pressure so I can, you know, kill the opponent while we're stealing and sacrificing their stuff. This does have a bit of treasure synergy, but it's not like we ended up with a ton of cards that want us to have treasure. 
So I'll take a golem. Alrighty. So, yeah, nice change of pace to actually draft a synergistic deck for once. Where we get all the cards we need. Even though, again, like, I have one rare in this deck, Paladin. So it's not like we have any bombs, but at least we have some synergy. So I need to make a couple of cuts. Could maybe get away with 16 lands. I uh, can maybe cut a Hexblade. I'm kind of liking the Thief's Tools. Makes a treasure for the Hexblade too. Probably can't cut many creatures. Yeah, maybe one Hexblade. And then... Yeah, we can use Weaponry for the small creatures and then Price of Loyalty for the bigger ones. I think 16 lands is fine. Even though if I want to combo price with the uh, dispute, I'm gonna need five mana. But we're also making treasure, especially with the ogre too. So that helps us make more mana too. All right, three more cuts. Yeah, Vampire Spawn's one of our weaker creatures that doesn't really synergize very well. Maybe Herald's Cuttable too. Especially with 16 lands, I'm not going to activate it a whole lot. And then one last cut. Maybe one Weaponry or one Dispute. Yeah, Pair of Goblins also not the best here. It does potentially make two creatures that we can then th sacrifice to Dispute and to Ghoul. So we've got that going for it. Prisoners, you know, not a super important card by any means. I guess it's true that if the main purpose of Prisoners is to destroy opposing equipment, and our deck has for Price of Loyalty and Grim Bounty. The opponent's probably not going to have many creatures to equip in the first place. So that does make artifact removal less important. So I can get behind that argument. And then slightly in favor of black, because most of our early creatures are black. All right, seems fine. Why Thieves Tools? It's nice to get the robber unblockable to make more treasure. It's good with the hoarding ogres. It makes treasure, which is useful for a bunch of our cards. And uh, also Sepulcher Ghoul can attack for two power and then before damage, even though your creature's already unblockable thanks to the Thieves tools, you can still sacrifice a bunch of stuff to get in a big hit. So I don't hate it here. All right, I think this is it. Not an exciting hand. Maybe if the Horde Robber connects, we get a treasure for Hexblade, we've got something going. So hoping the opponent doesn't have a 2-drop. Being on the play also makes this hand more keepable, because it's more likely that the Horde Robber gets to hit the opponent. Okay. No 2-drop, please. All right, I mean, Dragon's Fire's premium removal. Although, don't really want to draw more lands at this point.
Okay. I'm fine trading Hexblade for Barbarian, basically. So price of loyalty of the top would be great. Well, guess I'm attacking. Let's trade. I might have to keep the dispute in case we top deck price. Although it's kind of unfortunate that we're not doing anything here. But we did lose our sack outlet, so. Okay. Price, please. Let's see how it is. Well, might as well uh, attack. I don't think we have many haste creatures. Maybe get two damage in. Gives us more sacrifice fodder for disputes. And technically, Paladin trades for uh, Brunor here. Pair of Goblins also works well with uh, Paladin. Because we can just pump up the tokens. Merchants. I think I'd rather attack first. Pump once. And then I can technically still activate the Paladin's ability. Yeah, I'm just hoping to draw a price of loyalty at some point. Eight damage is a lot. What I don't like about block and sack or block and, you know, pump with paladin is we're the ones that have to make the first move, so can easily get punished by some instant speed interaction. We would get death touch as well. Okay, well that makes it easy. Paladin shields, okay. It's plus two power thanks to Brunor. Taking ten.
I'm one shy of lethal here on the way back. Let's do some math. So I have four, and I could potentially pump Paladin three times, so that's six, which would be ten. So if I were to dispute a treasure... Yeah, that's unlikely to do much. So I think we just untap and then hope to draw something relevant. Swamp is not relevant. So now... Now what? Seven, eight. How many blockers do I leave back? I could attack with merchants, paladin, and then pump twice. And then I still have one activation left on defense to trade off with Death Touch even. I could of course just dispute, sack a treasure, hope to draw price to just maybe win on the spot. But if we miss, I've got four copies in 23, so it's not like I'm a favorite to draw. Pumping three times is 10 damage. So yeah, I think I'm just pumping here. And I'm leaving two goblins back. I have to have another null camp, I guess we're dead. Magic Missile does it too. Magic Missile would have been a reason to leave back Merchant as opposed to a goblin. So maybe it was better to attack with one goblin and leave Merchant back. Well, two cleric classes. Uh huh, I see. Opponent's just gonna gain a bunch of life. Yeah, this could be tough. Ally in two turns. So I'm probably forced to just dispute sacking a treasure and then hope to draw a price of loyalty here. That's not it. All right, there we go. Do we win now? We should be able to. So... I can use one treasure, get this to seven, or I guess it's gonna lose the brain or bonus, so it's still only five. But then I can uh, pump it a few times with the Paladin. Yeah, pumping twice should do it. Can make them lose a life too. Not that it matters. All right. On the draw, so the robber probably not gonna connect. Although we can pump it with a pair of goblins if needed. And then hoping to draw some sack outlets. We've got the ghoul, we've got the dispute and the merchant. All right, so if 
we get to 5 mana, we can pull off the combo. Well, if this connects, I can play my Ogre, which would be great. Alright, not sure what's going on here. Put on maybe black, red, splashing white. That's my explanation here. Alrighty, so... Yeah. Probably just attacking with Hoarding Ogre. I could send the robber, have them double block and then... Or I guess single block with the Hexblade and then... I could uh, pair of goblins to kill it, but that seems unnecessary. Uh, if they double block, I guess I would trade for both. I think I just send the Ogre. And then, I mean, I guess if I send the Ogre, they might double block it, so then the robber can get a treasure. Yeah, that's fair. And then we'll play another Ogre, have our Price of Loyalty plus Dispute for next turn. Right, they are double blocking there, so I don't think I'm pairing, so we'll just kill Javelin here then. So hopefully they play a big juicy creature for me to steal and sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, I could dispute. We do have more sacrifice outlets in the deck. And I don't really want to steal the Hexblade. So, could Barbarian make a treasure, play Golem? Opponent could also be doing the same, of course, so we could see a Price of Loyalty plus a Sacrifice effect. Still hoping to draw Merchant, Dispute or Ghoul. Well, Red Dragon is worth stealing and Merchant can sack it too. So yeah, that should work. A pair of Goblins might just end the game too here. So, 11, we'll give the honors to a pair of goblins. But would've been able to play merchant and then still have the mana to sacrifice the dragon too if we wanted to. Fine hand. Turn two, probably just make a treasure. Opponent a blue-red dice rolling deck. Ooh, Malice and Scary. Do have the steel and sack combo in hand at least. And that also works. Uh, 
All right. How about we draw a card before we sacrifice it? And we've got another Wombo Combo rolled up. Could have played Hag's Blade and draw a card. Seemed like a waste of a treasure. Alright, let's uh, refocus here. Seven mana. Yeah, I probably want that Seeker out of the way. And then I can go for Tomb of Annihilation to deal one extra damage. Sacrifice it. And Tax Blade seems good here. And I'm prepared to do it again. All right, fine hand. Probably fine to play Hex Blade on two, even though we don't draw a card with it. Hmm, I guess Morningstar is fine. Next turn I can Weapon Wreath a veteran, sadly. Don't get to equip right away. All right, there's our combo. Fair enough. So one mana short of price plus dispute, which is a little unfortunate. I could play the Hex Blade using my treasure in the hopes of drawing a land. Or I can use my treasure to play Golem. Or I can just equip the Morning Star and pass. I mean, I'm gonna have to draw a land here at some point. So I think I'm okay just sacking the treasure then. And then I can still dispute on my Goblin token. If I miss on a land drop here. Alright, I guess Ghoul works to set up my Price of Loyalty too. So now I don't need 5 mana. All the disputes a bit more satisfying than sacking to the ghoul. Yeah, as much as I want to get this golem out there, I think I just got to kill the Pegasus. That plan's too bad. So I only have six on the way back. 
Yeah, it's probably just a golem and pass. Could maybe attack with one creature. Just feels risky. Hasty cell sword. Yep. So I have to block with the golem. But I don't have to block the cell sword necessarily. So I could block like this. Like this, like this, and then sack Hexblade to the ghoul. So it doesn't die. Sure. And then should have lethal on the way back here. All right. Well, that's what they call a combo. Get our mountain. Probably not going to want to steal the first creature the opponent plays. So I can get the thief's tools going. Hopefully pick up some more creatures along the way. Guild thief is scary. It's kind of tricky here, like... I don't think my opponent's gonna tr block if I attack with a ghoul, but I really don't want him to trade. I guess I could equip the thief's tools, but I think I'm just gonna pass and then I'm happy if the opponent just stays back with the guild thief and doesn't attack. If they do start growing it, then I might eventually have to steal it. Alright, this is a fine exchange. Let's play Golem and pass. And then next turn I'll maybe equip the Ghoul, start attacking. Null Hunter. Put in a three colors. So now it might be worth it to steal one of them, especially now that we drew a second price. So I could steal Probably the Null Hunter at this point. Do I use a treasure is a question. I can attack with everyone. And then I could just sack it to the ghoul right away. Especially in case if they block with Thief. So if they block with Thief on ghoul, it would be a waste of a treasure if I use it. Could of course also equip. And that makes it easier. And then I am allowed to maybe use the treasure, but we've got more uses for the treasure later. So I feel like not using it is fine. Can attack, even get a trigger here for one extra damage. And then damage. And sacrifice. And then next turn we might have lethal, we'll see. Ooh, Mind Flare. Okay. So what that's gonna do is make it so my Golem has Summoning Sickness, I believe. So might not have lethal next turn, but we can steal the Mind Flare just fine here. And then, now I guess I'll use a treasure.
Right, now ghoul plus any sacrifice creature could be lethal. Right, that can save them. Nope, that's the wrong one to bounce. So what we can do is go to combat, attack, creatures unblockable, and then before damage we can uh, sacrifice, and that's four. On the play, yeah, I'll keep this. Hopefully no busted class enchantment here. Ooh, teleportation circle. That can be scary. For now... Didn't really want to trade sentry and barbarian, so probably just kill the cleric. And wait on my price of loyalty until something bigger and scarier shows up. I think I'm just doing nothing here. They might play a good creature with an ETB effect that we have to deal with. Yeah, potion's a good one too. That draws a card every turn with circle. So I'm gonna have to end the game quickly before opponent takes over. And it's not looking great in that regard. Get Ogre going first. Yeah, Priest plus Teleportation Circle, quite a combo too. Probably still have to steal Moon Dancer, but... If I don't draw another removal spell, we're gonna be in trouble. Wow, a Rope or two. Yeah, Pun's got a pretty insane green-white deck here. With, uh... Moonblast Cleric to grab the circle too. Yeah, I don't think uh, we're likely to win this one. What do I even steal? Moondancer, maybe? Priest? I've got other removal spells that can maybe kill the priest more easily. It's 
So we're missing another sack outlet now. Well, they're still drawing an extra card every turn. Wow, double class two. And your opponent uh, drafted a constructed deck here, pretty much. If I take out the priest, we can definitely reduce the amount of synergy they've got going here. I'm happy to trade. They don't have any mana to gain life at instant speed. So... Can block like this, or better yet, block like this. They just killed the ogre. All right, just need removal for this priest. I mean, we're not out of the woods yet, because cleric class is just going to bring something back out of the graveyard. All right, that's a good draw. Now, I don't think I use my treasure, because I can use a treasure to draw with merchants. So I can price, steal the priests. Yeah, if I equip Morningstar... I'm gonna be one mana short if they block my Horde Robber. If I put Morningstar on Horde Robber, only pumps one power so they could trade and then I wouldn't be able to sack the Priest anymore so that seems too risky. Just gonna steal here, sack here. Hmm, let's see, did I mess up? Because I ended up using a treasure to sacrifice anyway, so maybe I was better off using the treasure to get two more damage in. Well, we're still very far behind. Owlbear also draws an extra card, but they still had the potion anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna need a few more prices of loyalty over the top. Double class, keeps growing the team. Grim Bounty, okay. Kill Owlbear. Then I can equip Barbarian attack with it. I guess they could sacrifice a potion of healing to grow the sentry. Then I would just sack the barbarian to the merchants, and then they would not have potion to combo with circle anymore. So that would have been a fine outcome. And then I'm probably just gonna sack a treasure end of turn, but maybe I'll have to sack a creature instead. They still have Cleric class that they can get to level 3, so that's going to be problematic. So, second Cleric. Yeah, opponent has 
three ways to access their teleportation circle and they've got a lot of synergy with it so I think that's probably the final nail in the coffin here double druid class with a cleric class giving counters a cleric class that can still get back a moon dancer or a priest to combo with circle and we've already gone through double price of loyalty and we're out of sacrifice outlets I think I'm gonna throw in the towel here. Hmm, not an exciting hand. But also probably not a mulligan. We'll see if the robber gets to go first. Well, it's not gonna accomplish much with a cleric in play, but who knows. Well, I can attack and finish off with weaponry now. Next turn, probably Golem. The werewolf, scary. So next turn, they could pump the werewolf to trade for my Golem and draw card. Although then I could block the cleric. Although they might just send the werewolf and the hawk. I mean, I'm probably still playing the Golem here. My alternatives aren't great. Opponent just venturing instead, so I guess they didn't want to trade for a pack leader. And now we picked up a dispute, so that's perfect. All right, let's steal ourselves a werewolf. Even get to draw a card in the process. And then I probably want to thin out the deck first. Get a swamp. Even though if I drew an untapped plan, I could have maybe played Paladin. Alright, not bad. Hang on to my treasure for Hexblade. Tools makes another treasure for Hexblade. I'm okay if my Golem trades for Unicorn. Could suit it up with a Morningstar to trample over for a bit, but that doesn't seem necessary. But might as well play Hexblade first, in case I draw something useful. That can destroy the portable hole, get my robber back. Not a priority right now. So... Yeah, I think Golem just trades... And then I can go Tools into Hexblade into Paladin. Seems okay. Owlbear, hopefully pick up another price of loyalty here. But we can use a paladin to maybe pump our creatures to get past it. 
So I could equip Thief's Tools. And then maybe just a one hex blade. And then I might want to pump on defense. Either way, I can play the Morning Star first, see what we get. So that's equipped. Yeah, I probably need to block on defense here and pump with Paladin. So for now, just uh, equip a Hex Blade and hit for two. And then I could also make a treasure with a Paladin at end of turn if I don't need to pump. And then we can sign the treasure to the dispute to draw to if we want. Alright, opponents gonna complete their dungeon eventually. And I need to draw some action. So Thief's Tools works up to 3 power, so I could put the Morning Star on the Hexblade. And hit for 3. It's probably reasonable. We do have the combo of potentially Death Touch plus Trample, so that can help us close out the uh, game potentially. Better to get back my Horde Robber than making another treasure. Okay. Ranger's a good one. Yeah, I could sack a treasure to draw to. My concern is that I have about the same number of Price of Loyalties left versus sack outlets, so if I use this and I draw price of loyalty, I might be unable to sacrifice whatever we steal. So I think I still wait. Alright, now that I drew another sack outlet, I can use Dispute as a cantrip. Yeah, I can also just pump the unblockable Hanks Blade after attackers are declared a few times, and that can close out the game pretty quickly. Just have to make sure we don't die on the way back. So I have 8 lands, 2 treasures. So I could just attack with Hank's Blade Pump twice, that's 7 damage, which is threatening a lethal next turn. And then I can play a Ghoul out, and we should have enough blockers to survive an attack from the opponent, so I think that's probably the straightforward solution here. So we'll pump once. Paladin is doing a lot of work here. Can also equip the ghoul with the thief's tools to give us a big attacker, but pumping with Paladin is good enough. Opponent has to do something. Sends in the team. Alright, so go to blocks. I can trade here. I guess a bull strength of the top could maybe deal extra damage, so we'll have to keep that into account. Then I can maybe block the dungeoneer with something I'm planning to sack to the ghoul. So how about we block with a robber? And then ghoul can profitably block the owlbear and trade for it, maybe. And then this eats this, this trades there. Yeah, this looks good. Sang the robber, grow the ghoul. Still have our two creatures to work with and our barbarian. If they give plus one plus one to the team, what happens? I guess they could have top decked the uh, two mana instant. Then. 
I mean, we still have lethal on the way back, so it doesn't really matter. Choose your weapon, double power, sure. Yeah, they could have doubled the owlbear's power. Not that it would have made a huge difference. Alright, there we go. Alright, on the play, missing red. But I don't think I can pass this up. We've got Ghoul, Golem on 4 with any 4th land, and if we draw Mountain, this sounds great. Alright, if the opponent has Deadly Dispute, they could kill my Ghoul here. Silver Raven, so very low curve, blue-black, maybe Rogue's deck. Nice. Alright, so probably just kill the Raven, hit for two. I could also steal the Ghasts and then sack it to kill the Raven, maybe that's even better. Since we have double price anyway. Vampire spawns, fine. Just gotta get the golem in play to apply some pressure. The genie we could steal. and decided to absorb a bit of damage and lose the vampire spawn in the process. Ghasts. Alright, Ghast is a little bit annoying. I uh, can chump the golem, kill my ghoul. But it's not like using weaponry is all that great here. I can kill the ghast and then Lose the ghoul, deal 5 with the golem instead of 2 with the ghoul, but we also lose out on our weaponry. So I th think we just, uh, you know, go for it. By attacking with the ghoul, I give them the option of maybe blocking ghoul and then making a treasure instead of giving minus 1, minus 1, and it's possible they need the treasure, but then we're dealing 5, so I think it's still fine to attack with both. And that's the expected play. And since we're out of uh, prices of loyalty, it's fine to lose the ghoul here. Alright, opponent's at 11. We're gonna need some help off the top. And yeah, contact author plane, gonna draw two here. So we're not that far ahead anymore. Couldn't quite keep up the pressure.
yeah, this uh, Hall of the Storm Giants is going to make the difference. Another weaponry off the top is not going to save us. Opponent going for two creatures instead here. Another land off the top. Yeah, sometimes you just float out a bit. Not much we can do. And then draw any of our disputes to keep the cards flowing. Otherwise we could have sacked the treasure, draw two, and hopefully find more goodies. But looks like we're dead here. GG's. Alright, so didn't quite get to 7 wins, but still, with our only rare being the Paladin at 1 mana, we managed to rare draft quite a bit, still got away with 6 wins, with just a pile of uh, common synergies. So yeah, that's a good example of what a Black Red Steal and Sacrifice deck can look like in the format. And uh, the important part, while stealing and sacrificing, is to still be able to apply a bit of pressure to the opponent. That's where the Iron Golem was very useful, Hoarding Ogre can help. We were a bit creature light, so we weren't quite able to deal damage while stealing and sacrificing some amount of the time. So the deck wasn't perfect, but still not a bad example of uh, how to build to red-black in this format. So we'll crank some packs. Zalto, Fire Giant, Duke. Not particularly impressive. Pack one, pick one. I've had a lot of fun with the Troubadour, even if it doesn't always come together. But there's some other good two drops Outlander, Captain, and of course the Sepulchre Ghoul for the Red Black deck. Although, don't think I would be first picking the Ghoul. Long rests. Can be okay in slower games, although most games tend to be pretty fast in this format. So I think I prefer Owlbear if we're taking a green card. And uh, yeah, the dice rolling deck also doesn't come together often. So I'd probably stick to the Owlbear over Devil's Chosen. Alrighty. So I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.